Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really cool arcade repair video for you today. We have yet another Pong arcade game in our shop. This is not the same one that we fixed before. This is a completely different one with a different monitor and uh, a different setup. So, if you enjoyed our other video where we fixed a Pong, this is an original Atari Pong, not a reproduction an original. If you liked our other video, you'll love this one. Now, if you didn't see our other video, go check it out here on our channel. Or maybe keep watching this one and then go check that one out. We don't want to get you lost or anything. So uh, this belongs to our buddy Luke, who uh, comes up with some really cool machines from time to time. So he bought this Pong off of somebody and he sent it to us. It's in pretty nice shape. This is not the original wood grain on it. It's been replaced, but it looks pretty nice. But uh, that is the original bezel. That is the original control panel. Not sure if that's the original monitor. We're going to figure that out here in a minute. But it does have a lot of Pong burn-in on it. So it's at least been a Pong for a long time. Um, but yeah, nice clean looking little cabinet. Check that out. What a beautiful little game. Show you what the back looks like right now. It has an, a 69 painted on the back. I have no clue why. I doubt it's serial number 69. It's probably somebody uh, that was like the game number. Sometimes the operators would put stuff like that on it if you had a, you know, they would give it their own number so that uh, for uh, accounting purposes and things. So who knows what that 69 is for. But yeah, this is what we're starting with. Now, whenever it was shipped to us, we were told that it worked fine. It just needed, uh, the sound didn't work. And it got here and it, it was well packaged you know, the guy had blankets all over it and everything, and it got here, and everything's cool. But uh, whenever we plug it in, according to Joe, he plugged it in, and nothing worked. It wasn't doing anything. So then he said, okay, we'll fix it, and uh, we'll let Luke know you fixed it. <laughs> so now we got to fix it for Luke, so we'll see, we'll see what's going on. Another thing, oh, these... Uh, Pongs, a lot of them had different types of paddles on them, so I don't know if uh, these are the correct ones or the other ones are the correct ones. Or I believe that they've changed them over time. Like, so I don't know if those are original or if somebody's replaced them. They certainly look nice. I am not a pong expert, but this will be our second one that we fix. So i'm ready to get into it so i'm gonna get a screwdriver we'll take the back door off and see what the inside of this sucker looks like so here's the back door of it we took off and uh there's a piece of paper missing that might have been the schematics remember whenever we did the other one the schematics were still stapled to the back door of the monitor but alas they are missing but we have this piece here that's still mainly there and it says, Adjustment for Procedure for Pong Video Game. This machine has been tested and adjusted, fully tested and adjusted prior to leaving the factory. It has been designed to be as maintenance free as possible. An effort has been made to reduce the heat generated by the machine to increase the lifetime of the components. The following adjustments can be made if the operator feels they are needed. The contrast, brightness, volume, horizontal, and vertical hold controls on the television set still operate as in a normal TV. Two, the end of the game can be set to occur at a score of 11 or 15 by adjusting the slide switch on the printed circuit board. Two labels are provided to affix to the front of the machine to indicate where the game will end. Three, two potentiometers are provided on the circuit board to adjust the travel of the paddles. Turn the front panel player knobs fully counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Then adjust the potentiometers on the circuit board until the paddle is as far down as you want it to go. Oh, so you're saying they could cheat. I could leave a little hole where it screws everybody out of a quarter. <laughs> and anti, I'll show you that later. If we get the thing up and running, I'll show you how those work. 
Four, an anti-slam switch is located next to the coin mechanism. This can be adjusted to prevent game from starting automatically when the machine is struck forthfully. The Pong computer is fully guaranteed for a period of one year after the date of purchase. So they bought this in 73. So it's 2020 right now. So in 1973, it's guaranteed for one year. That means the warranty would run out in... 1974. Damn it! We're late. Should any questions arise, contact your dealer or Atari Inc. Santa Clara, California telephone. There you go, people. Give them a call. Tell them we got a pong here we got issues with. We want to know uh, if there's anybody there we can talk to about it. Okay, so there's the back door. Let's look inside the actual machine. So this is the monitor that's in it. Um, it's not a TV set, so I don't believe this is the original monitor, but I believe it may work. Because it has really bad Pong burn on it, so I think that it probably has been set up as a Pong for a long time. It kind of looks like a Wells Gardner monitor to me. If I was just going to guess, I would say that's a Wells Gardner monitor. Now, I don't know that, but the reason I'm saying that is because I've seen some of their ones on like Space Invaders that have this same type of board on it. It may even be that same board. Um, the case is a little different. But this one's a little smaller, so I don't know. It may be an early Wells Gardner. Let's see if it says. Oh, no. It's a Motorola, I believe. Yeah, Motorola. It's a Motorola XM500-11. So I don't know if that would have been original to Pong or not. Let me show you on the front. You can't see too good. Maybe with a light you can. Yeah, there you can. See the burn in? 11, the line in the middle, 18 on the left. So this has, been a, this has been working in this machine for a long time. So that means we're going to get it back to working if we can help it. Tube's in good shape, it looks like. At least as best you can tell. It is, it's, I just mean it's not physically broken. Um, everything's cool. I like the looks of all of it. It looks un... Uh, Looks like it's not been screwed up. And then we got electrical tape down here. So, that, you know, that's probably not original. Uh, use a one amp fuse only. So they've got power coming in, I guess. Just off of this line. All right, so we got our electrical wire. And then this is our video, I would suppose. Been spliced. Here is our board. It does look to be an original Pong board. Let's see if I can get you down in there where you can see it a little better. So, I suppose that's an original Pong PCB. You know, they made these for a while, so who knows what revision or or what. There was a little isolation transformer up there, I guess, for the monitor or something. Or some kind of little some kind of little transformer. I don't know if it's an isolation transformer. There is a little coin switch. You can see the two potentiometers up there on the control panel. And then the famous bread pan. That was the coin box. <laughs> then down here in the bottom, we have a couple quarters, a few pieces of foam that must have made up the, the shroud around the, uh, the bezel around the monitor, and then a little ball thing. Okay. So, uh, hmm. I guess what we're going to do is plug it in and see what happens. Right? Everything looks cool. We'll see what we get. So this is what we're getting when turned on. Very bright picture. Uh, I mean, very bright screen. No image. Rolling. Stuff popping up and down. So, uh, first thing we need to do is check some... Well, I'm going to turn down the brightness and then we need to check some voltages. 
Okay, so uh, I pull up the schematics, and on the back it shows you that the there are four knobs, and the left and the right are the contrast and the brightness, right? So I have unplugged the game board. We still have an all white screen. Contrast and brightness. If I adjust those, contrast does nothing that we can see. And the brightness does appear to turn it up. But uh, we're way too high. Something's. Basically, that's what everything turned all the way down. So I'm going to turn it all back off. But I have the board unplugged right now, so that's good. Okay, so in these schematics, it tells you that the voltage that runs everything on a monitor, you know, is the B plus voltage. B plus should be 73 volts. And the place that you can check that is this test point right here, which is pin 2 of the, this represents the circuit card, that board we were looking at right in the middle. So if I find pin 2, I can check while it's on to see if it has 73 volts there. So I'm going to check that, but we're going to end up recapping the whole monitor anyway. But I figured I would just check to see if the B plus is high or something, and if that's why we're having a where we can't turn down the brightness all the way, or if it uh, if it's a capacitor thing. So I'll check that real quick, and then we'll pull it out and start recapping it. Here comes the juice. All right, so I've got it hooked to ground and to pin two, and we're at 72.3 volts. They were acting like you should have the contrast and the brightness turned all the way up. I don't know if that's going to change anything. Brightness all the way up actually dropped it slightly. Okay, so uh, it's in spec, but uh, we're going to take it out and recap it because we shouldn't even have it on really with all those old capacitors in it. Okay, so this is how the video is. The red and the black are together on one with the ground line and then the green is going to this so I don't know about that but hey now it's documented for all posterity <laughs> so if that doesn't work that could be our whole problem it's just not sending video to the monitor because they've got that all screwed up I don't know but uh, we'll figure it out so we got the monitor out have it on the table um, so yeah, this can't be the original monitor because there's no sound on it. So they were saying that everything works, there's just no sound. Well, nothing's working. And there never would have been any sound with this monitor in there because normally they sent the video and the sound up to the uh, TV that was in it, basically. So if you, if you didn't see our other video, originally, at least that particular one had a TV in it. This one doesn't have a speaker mounted anywhere in the cabinet, so I've got to assume that originally it probably had the same kind of setup. But this is a pretty cool monitor, and it's in a, you know it's been in there a long time. It look, just looks like they've never hooked the sound up. Now in Pong, there's only two sounds, I believe. There's like a boop, 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 and then there's like bang, I think whenever you miss. There may not even be the buzzer. It may just be the beep. Um, so that's pretty simple. So we'll, we might have to put like a little amplifier inside of it or something in the speaker somewhere. But um, maybe we can get the monitor working. Um, the whole thing may have been that video connection, I don't know, but they had it all taped up like that's how it was, so I would think maybe that means that originally it was up and running, uh, but we'll figure it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this board off, which will allow us to get in there, we can find some of the capacitors and replace them, get everything freshened up a little bit, get new capacitors through here, and uh, hopefully get it where we can turn the brightness down at least. And then once we do that, uh, we'll also look at how they have the video hooked up and see if we can tell by looking at the schematics if that's the correct way to do it or not. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me pull this out. So first thing I found was this green wire is disconnected. Or it is now. I don't know if it was like that when it was in the game. And then I found this post here where it was wire wrapped originally. So it would have went on there somewhere. So I'm going to solder that back on. See how they have this one wire wrapped? So this needs to go back there, and then I'm going to start replacing some capacitors. Okay, so I've recapped it. 
uh, basically all the electrolytics, the, uh, these little, I don't even know what these are, but I found in the past, these are not good to replace. <laughs> You're going to run into problems if you try to replace those. Um, but if you have issues, I guess. But none of these are electrolytic. So I replaced all the ones that were electrolytic. And then, except for the filter ones, there are still, there's like three or four over here and in the canister that I haven't replaced because they're filter capacitors. And I don't have the right ones. So if, usually that'll give you like a wiggle on the screen or something. So if we end up where we've got some kind of issue with that or the, the um, there's noise in the line or something, we'll probably have to go back and do those, but I'll have to order them special. Um, and then I checked out this line. So basically they've got some of the pins, some of the, the, they've got the shielding going to, uh, pin number six, which is ground. And then they've got the video or the, the shield, the, the, um, insulated wire going to pin number eight, which is the composite video input. Originally it would have plugged in up here. But apparently they don't have this weird connector, so they're just, they literally just soldered the wire to the bottom of the two pins on here. Um, so I looked in the Pong manual, or the schematics, and pin number 22 coming off the Pong board is ground. Pin number 20 coming off the Pong board is, we believe, composite video. And pin number 16 coming off the Pong video is sound. So... I'm going to go in the game now and see which ones they had connected to what and review the where we filmed a little video a second ago and see how the hell they had that hooked up. But uh something wasn't right. So we'll see we'll see uh what the wiring looks like inside the cabinet again. Alright, so here are the Pong schematics. They are available on the internet. Um this is the basically it's a very you saw it's very simple inside. So the transformer hooks up to it right here, and then pins eight and nine are five volts coming out of the board. It makes its own uh, voltage on the board, has a, a voltage regulator on the board. The five volts come out, one of them runs the counter, one of them runs the paddles. Um, there is a ground that hooks to all kinds of stuff, uh, that one of them's hooking up to the transformer ground. Blah, 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 it's paddle in input number one is on pin 14, blah, 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 blah. So here's where we are. So pin 22 is a ground that runs over for the video. And then pin 20 is video composite video. And then pin 16 is sound. And then pin 15 is an antenna for some reason that we haven't figured out yet. I say we because uh, Matt's here helping me. <laughs> so I'm helping... Yeah, he's helping, kind of. So 22 is uh, in the in the cabinet. Whenever you look, 22 is black a black wire. Pin 20 is the green wire. Pin 16 is the red wire. And then pin 15, the antenna, is a white wire that runs up by the paddles and just doesn't go anywhere. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put the monitor back in. Uh, we're going to hook up the black wire to the um, the part of the wire that's in, that's on the monitor that was ran over to ground. And then we're going to hook up pin 20, the green wire, to the shielded part of, or the uh, encased part of the wire that runs uh, to where the composite input is on it. We're not going to hook up the red wire because it's the sound. I don't know why they were sending that up to the board with uh, no speaker on it, unless I missed something. I didn't see a speaker. That may have been screwing things up. And the antenna wire, I don't even know why that's there, but um, I guess it's like a, I don't know, whatever. Maybe to keep it from getting in interference or something? Why would they do that? Yeah, I don't know. Cancel out interference? I couldn't tell you. Okay, we're going to figure it out. Matt's going to Google it. <laughs> but so basically, I'm just going to hook up these two wires, and we'll see if, if we can get an image on the screen. If we can't, then we'll check the voltage out of the transformer and the voltage regulator on the board and all that. We'll figure it out. Okay, so after putting it back in, we have it where we can adjust the brightness now. And it's whistling a little bit on us. But we're getting no gameplay. So there's the board is not doing a damn thing. It doesn't appear or we still don't have the video right. Or the monitor is incapable of displaying video. The horizontal hold, if you don't tweak it a little bit, it starts squealing. But probably because it's not getting a it's not getting an image. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the voltage coming out of the transformer and uh, see what's going on on the game board. Okay, so we pulled out the board and we looked at the schematics to try to figure out what exactly is going on. So, here's how they made it work. The center tap is supposed to connect here to the ground and then you're supposed to get a transformer voltage here and a transformer voltage here. And then they run through these two diodes and with the, the uh, voltage regulator and the cap and everything, they make five volts that runs the whole board. So I wasn't getting the five volts. And when I checked the two uh, wires from the transformer, I'm getting like, I was getting 10 or 11 volts on one and only five volts on the other one. So that's weird, right? And then whenever I unplugged uh, the harness, I was getting like 15 on one and 10 on the other one. That's weird. It shouldn't be like that. You ought to get the same voltage. Um, and I was checking it on the harness, unplugged. You ought to get the same voltage on either side because it's running out of the transformer, right? So that seems to be a weird problem. So some of you probably immediately figured out how that is possible, but <laughs> I'll go show you in the game what they did. Okay, so here's our harness. So I'm checking, everything's turned off right now. I'm checking on this pin here and uh, using uh, these two uh, green lines here. Those are the transformer lines. So you can see the transformer is right here in the cabinet. And you see the black line coming off the center tap there. Now look how they've taped wires together and crap. I'm going to redo all that. But you see how they've got the, the green wires coming off the outside of the transformer and then it's center tapped with that black wire. But that black wire doesn't come back towards the harness. It runs down here and it runs to this slam switch. Slam switch is really weird because nobody ever knows if there should be open or closed. But this particular one... They've got bent open, but it should be closed. It should always be closed. And so if it was closed, it would connect it to this black line, which runs back up here to pin 21. <laughs> pin 21. So pin 21, there is a ground trace that connects pin 21 and pin 22 all the way around the board over to pin 1 and 2, which is how it should be. So. Basically, because it, it had lost its center tap, we were just getting the voltage from the, the uh, two transformers and it wasn't balanced because the center tap was missing. That's why we had a higher voltage on one side. So I need to bend this back where it's always closed. You could just jump her around it, um, but uh, we're going to bend it back where it's always closed because it's supposed to be, if somebody really bumps the machine, this little weight opens it up and makes the game reset. But it should, after it stops bouncing, settle back down where it's touching. And uh, that connects your center tap back together and gets the game back together. So uh, we're going to bend that back, get it just right, and then put the board back in and see if we get our, uh, our correct voltage back to the uh, game board and then get our 5 volts being regulated by the game board. And if we do, hopefully it'll boot up. All right. So that worked. Hey Matt, come play it. <laughs> let me put a quarter. Let me coin it up. Now, of course, we can't leave it like this. We're just testing until we get it actually up and doing its thing. Matt's going to test it for us. Is my paddle supposed to be smaller? So we got some paddle issues here. Yes, your paddle has always been smaller. Everybody knows that. Okay, uh,. Boy, this game sucks without any sound. Okay, so we got jumpy paddles. Man, you're cheating, man. How come you're cheating? Yeah, as I teleport to the top of the screen. <laughs> this may be the greatest game of all time. There's nothing like Pong when the paddles are screwed up. Oh, well, you beat me at 11 points. Oh, that's how that worked. I guess it's set up for 11 instead of 15. Okay, so Matt, on the schematics, show us what the antenna does. All right. Matt figured it all out, folks. Are you ready for this? 
Okay, here we go. All right. So the antenna goes into pin 15 on the main board. Yes, antenna. And um, he found it on the schematics. Well, now all the, you know all of the video game guys, they already know all this, right? Yeah, sure. This is for our younger viewers who are fascinated by this old tech. Let's see. Me and Matt had no clue. You by any chance see pin 15 on here? <laughs> Matt, you figured it all out. Now you've now you've lost it. What in the world? I would think it would be around the edges. Yep, I'm looking right now. So anyway, while I look for it, it uh, so uh, the uh, engineers were worried somehow that kids in the 70s would uh be able to uh, make the coin mech. Is that it there? <laughs> where? Right here? Or is that like where it's connected to voltage? No, down below. Um, down below. Down below. Farther down below. Farther down below. Right there. To the left. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Never mind. But anyway, so the Atari engineers were worried that kids would somehow be able to uh, fake the coin mechanisms with uh, static. I don't know what kids in 1972 were going to do to create static. They dragged their feet on the carpet. Yeah, I guess. God, you must have been a boring kid. But they, um, anyway, so that antenna wrapped <laughs> around the cabinet, and uh, if there was any interference, it would pull a transistor to ground and reset the game. Where is that transistor that you're talking well, about? Well, that's the thing. I was trying to find it on this board. But, so yeah, it's antenna 15. <laughs> you don't see 15 on here. Find it for us, Matt. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead and find it. That's it right there. No, that's that's voltage. That's, that's voltage in. Okay, yeah. yeah these things. All of the antenna signals. Oh, here we go. It's it's hidden in the middle of the... Okay, we're going to zoom right in. Wait, okay. I zoomed in too, and you zoomed in. Okay, hold on a second while I find it. Uh, here we go. <laughs> yep, so there's pin 15. Okay, yep, pin Bi 15. Biased with a diode, and uh, if it picks up enough interference, it will drag that transistor to ground. Yes. And that'll short from ground to uh, this transistor, which runs to some of the main circuitry up here. I don't feel like tracing it. Um, oh, yeah, there it is. It think, does that say reset? It's hard to tell. I can't tell. Something. Yeah. So, yeah, basically it reset the game back to a track mode if uh, there was any large sort of radio interference. Oh, okay. So, so all you punk kids that tried to shock the Pong game back in the day to get extra credits, ha-ha, <laughs> Atari foiled your ass. Okay, folks, so that's it for now. We've got it up and running, but it sure isn't running very well, so we need to do a lot more work to it. Uh, but we'll do that on a second video and let you see uh, how she turns out. Uh, but it worked. So basically, we had to redo uh, the monitor. We I ended up reordering re, uh, the filter cap capacitors as well, replacing those, uh, which got rid of the wine in the monitor. Uh, and then uh, uh, the slam switch being open was why the board wouldn't boot up. And uh, that got us to where we were. Now, remember, we don't have any sound. The paddles aren't working right. Uh, and maybe there's some other things we need to mess with. So you'll see those on the next video. But it's kind of fun working on a real classic like this. And I love working on anything Atari anyway. So leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this for you. Uh, did you know that we have a second channel now? My brother Donnie has been recording videos, and he's pretty wild and crazy. I appear over there sometimes, too. Uh, we bought an old mobile home that we're restoring, and uh, multiple hijinks ensued. So go check that out if you get a chance. The channel's called My Brother Donnie. It has nothing to do with arcade games. It's more about farming and things like that. Uh, mechanical work, uh, uh, small engine repair, things like that. So go check us out on My Brother Donnie while you have the chance. Uh, and uh, if you haven't subscribed to us here on Lions Arcade, make sure to do that too. Did you know that 90% of our views come from people who are not subscribed to us? I don't even see how that's possible, but it is. <laughs> so uh, make sure to subscribe to us. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this for you. And uh, leave your comments below about what you think so far. We're going to have one more video of us working on this thing where we get into it a little more in depth. We know people like seeing some of this older stuff that... There's not all that much uh, video of the insides of or the the workings of. So uh, leave your comments below. And uh, also, we have a link down below to Amazon. And on our Amazon link, if you just click that link, you don't have to sign up for anything or open an account or anything like that. But if you decide you want to buy something on Amazon, if you click our link before you go to Amazon, it tells Amazon, Hey, Joe's Video Games, Lions Arcade. 
my brother Donnie <laughs> sent these people to Amazon, so we're going to pay them a little advertising fee. So people have been doing that a lot lately. There is a gentleman out there who keeps buying uh, small engine like carburetors and things and fuel pumps and things like that uh, lately. Uh, that's probably the most interesting thing people have been buying lately. Um, somebody was on there the other day buying some pool, uh, some floatables for their pool <laughs> and things like that. Every, no matter what you buy on Amazon, if you click, click that link first, it gives us a little tip for sending you to Amazon. And that's kind of fun. We really enjoy it. And we're getting paid Amazon's money for doing it. It doesn't raise your prices or anything anyway. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Maybe we can get this sucker working even better.